Hi, I'm Jen Neiman, co-founder of Property Elite, Chartered Surveyor and APC Assessor. At Property Elite, we provide training and support for the APC, Asset RICS and FRICS qualifications. We cover all routes, pathways and geographic regions via our team of specialist consultants and trained assessors. This also includes the senior professional, specialist, academic and direct entry routes. In today's podcast, we look at the measurement technical competency, which relates to the data capture and measurement of land and property. Specifically, we'll be looking at measuring tools, limitations, and how to measure accurately. This is essential listening for APC and SR Ritz candidates on a wide range of pathways where measurement is a technical competency. So, what measuring tools are there? Surveyors use a variety of measuring tools, the most common being the laser measurer or laser distometer, or DISTO. A laser DISTO works on the basis of measuring how long it takes the laser pulse to be reflected from a surface. For a typical DISTO, there is a measuring accuracy of plus or minus 1.5 millimetres, and they can cover distances of up to 200 metres. Some more advanced devices also allow for the measurement of areas, volume and triangulation. Tape measures are also a useful measuring tool, both in cloth and steel tape format. They're typically used for measuring narrow or complex areas, or where it's not possible to use a laser, such as in bright sunlight. A measuring rod could also be used for tight areas or to measure behind an occupier's fit-out, without causing damage or being intrusive. When measuring land, other tools may be better suited, such as a trundle wheel, mapping software, such as ProMap or Google Maps could also be used to cross-check site areas. Surveyors should always try to take a floor plan to site to annotate measurements on. Ideally, this will be a scale plan so that measurements can be cross-checked later on using a scale rule. If this isn't possible, then a neat and tidy floor plan could be sketched on site using graph paper or floor plan software or an application on a mobile or tablet device. Surveyors need to be aware of the limitations of their measuring tools. Here are three common ones. So number one, lasers don't work well in bright sunlight as it can be hard to see the laser beam. Using a long tape measure can overcome the issue or by shadowing the target area when using the laser. Secondly, when using a laser to measure to a dark surface, the measuring time can increase leading to inaccurate measurements. Taking a sheet of white A4 paper can be used as a measuring target. Thirdly, Lasers may be inaccurate when measuring to colourless liquids, glass, styrofoam, permeable or high gloss surfaces. So how can you calibrate your laser disto? It's possible to check typical accuracy and calibration for a disto by following the Lecker guidance detailed on our blog. This involves establishing a constant baseline, taking at least 10 measurements from a fixed point and carrying out a number of calculations. These results should be recorded in a log. It's also possible to send the disto away for recalibration. Typically, a laser may become inaccurate after being dropped and may show an error such as 256 when they become inaccurate. So how can you measure accurately? Accurate property measurement is essential to provide accurate reasoned advice to clients. Think about it. If you're valuing a large, high-value building, then even a small inaccuracy in floor areas will result in a larger discrepancy in the overall value. This goes the same for the measuring a property that's due to be refurbished. Even by being a few centimetres out may mean that the proposed design doesn't fit into the finished building. So here are five ways to measure accurately. One, take check measurements. If they differ, do it again. Two, Check measurements on site against scale floor plans. Three, check that you're measuring to the correct surfaces, for example, not to the occupier's fit out. Four, take the RICS guidance to site to ensure that you know what to include and exclude in the appropriate basis of measurement. And fifth, and finally, take your time. Measurement needs a logical and diligent approach. Taking a second person with you to hold a target for the laser can be helpful, or they can hold the other end of a tape or to annotate the measurements on a plan. It also avoids the need for loan working. So in conclusion, at level two for measurement, you need to be able to confidently and accurately measure buildings or land using a variety of devices. This includes being aware of potential limitations and sources of error, in addition to measuring in accordance with RICS property measurement second edition. 
If you're in doubt about your own measurement skills, why not use a practice exercise to test yourself out? Find a room in your house or office, take your measuring devices and annotate or sketch out a floor plan. Follow the RICS guidance, ensure that you make appropriate inclusions and exclusions. If you can compare these to a scale plan to check your accuracy, even better. So good luck. That's it for today's podcast. Remember, you can book in your free 15-minute consultation via our website. We can also provide feedback on your referral or prelim review report. If you head to our website, you can also access our other free support resources, including our ebook guides, podcasts, videos, quizzes, blog, and CPD newsletter. We can't wait to work with you, so thank you for listening, and I'll see you next week.